Hi guys, welcome to the second video on quantum programming. In the previous video, we looked at some very basic theory of quantum mechanics. And also we looked at the two frameworks that um, I was debating between IBM's Qiskit and Google's CERQ. So in this one, I've decided that I will for now go with IBM's Qiskit because um, both are at feature parity, but then Qiskit offers um, the ability to perform computation on actual quantum computers. So I think um, let's just go with Qiskit. So um, to use this, you definitely need to have Python, that too, Python 3.7 and onwards. And um, so right now I am at their homepage, qiskit.org, and you can download Qiskit or install Qiskit by um, uh, typing in the pip command. So what that does is uh, it'll install the Qiskit package. So that should install Qiskit for you in your Python package. And I will be using my Jupyter notebook for coding. So um, yeah, so if you wish, have Jupyter installed as well. And also all the code that you will see in this video, I will put them on my GitHub page and the links for this would be in the um, description below. So just reminding us of the states that are there. Um, so as you can see in this small image, um, give me one moment. Right. So this is a quantum state. A quantum state could be a superposition of two states. So here, that this is the ground state and this is the excited state. So this is quantum, which is a superposition of both. Classically, what we see is one of the states. Either we see zero or a vc1 we don't see a mixture but a quantum but in quantum realm it's a mixture and these coefficients are complex coefficients where their absolute value squared is basically the probability of the state so mod alpha squared is the probability of ground state and beta squared is the probability of um, state ex excited state so this tells us What's the probability of seeing? So when we perform the measurement, what is the probability of seeing state zero? And what is the probability of seeing state one when we actually perform the measurement? So let's write a very basic code using Qiskit that creates a quantum state and we measure it. So just to show you how these probabilities work. Um, I will not be running this on an actual quantum computer, but we will be simulating this. Um, we will set up uh, the workflow of working on an actual quantum computer in the later videos. So for now, we just want to do some basic simulations. So let's get on with it. Uh, right. So I have pulled up here my Jupyter notebook. And give me a moment while I pull up my notes as well. So we first begin with importing um, certain libraries. So which is first of um, first and foremost, it's NumPy, and also we need to import Qiskit as well. So let's first begin by importing all the libraries. Okay. So I first begin by. Importing the quantum circuit and then I also import basically a simulator and I import the math library. So all the imports done. This is basically something that allows me to um, create circuits, create quantum circuits, and this is the simulator that I will be using. So just to double check my um, version so what i'll do is uh, print out um sorry uh kiskit not defined oh that's weird let me double check this oh sorry my bad um uh Right, so now if I do, I can see the version um, and I'm using version 0.26. 
Yeah, I, I was using this module without importing it. So now let's create a simple circuit. So a simple circuit should look like this. So we use the same module that we imported and then we specify how many quantum bits are in our circuit. So we plan on having only one. So that's why um, I keep only one. Now let's define a variable that sets the initial state for this circuit and I set value to be 0 comma 1. So what initial state is, it sets the values of alpha and beta. So in, in the image that I showed you, uh, let's pull that up again. Yeah, so in this image, alpha and beta are the values that we are supplying here with this initial state. So alpha, beta being 0 and 1 means uh, my quantum state is just, it's not a mixture of both the states, it's only um, the one state. So these two are the alpha and beta values. Right, okay, so let me just, yeah, pull it down, because it might be useful later on. Okay, so I define these initial states, and then I want to initialize my network with um, the initial state. So if you do not initialize with a specific value, it always initializes with a zero state. So we are basically overriding the zero state with um, the one that we chose, that we chose. So zero state is, would be one comma zero because alpha is one and beta is zero. So that's pretty much it. And this, the way you create a quantum circuit is you keep on adding gates or operations and all the operations are in a sequential manner. So if you've ever created a neural network using PyTorch or um, TensorFlow, so they have this sequential way of creating a neural network where you just put in the, um, the neural network layer that you want and all of them are added sequentially. So this is what, this is the same thing that happens to um, a quantum circuit as well. So I keep on adding whatever gate or operation that I want and they are added in sequentially. So um, now that we have created our state, all I wanted to want to do is to measure, right? And I want the measurement to be done on everything because there's only one qubit. So I'll just use measure all. Uh, don't worry about what the particular functions are. They're pretty self-explanatory because measure all means it will measure everything and you can find more documentations on the Qiskit web page. So let's run this. Um, has no object initial. Oh, I'm bad. My bad. Right. So great. We have created our circuit. Now, a cool thing about Qiskit is that it gives you the ability to show you what you have, um, the circuit that you've written down. So it draws it out for you. So uh, let me do that. Circ dot there's a draw method and then um, I specify a string MPL and I'll tell you what it does. So MPL uses the matplotlib module. So you need to have matplotlib installed. So let's see what's happening. So here, this is my qubit. I set the initial state to be 0, 0,1 where alpha is 0 and beta is 1. And then I perform a measurement. And whatever the value for measurement is, that's stored here. And that's what we will be reading out. Okay, so pretty simple circuit. You have a quantum state, perform a measurement, and then um, just output out the results. So that that's all there is. So let's now simulate it. So to simulate it, we need to create a simulator. Um, and um, since we've already selected the one that we want, we've already imported it, we get the backend for it. So these are, just don't worry about these commands. You need to use them as is because that's what the documentation states. So we get a particular backend for it. And now the next thing is we need to transpile our code. So, and I pass in my simulator. Okay. so. Let's see. Um, oh, I need to 
import the trans file module as well. Okay, now this should run. Great. So this is working now. Now what has happened is, first of all, we select the simulator that, that we want. So right now, because we are using a simulator, we selected a simulator. If we were using an actual quantum computer, we would select that, just get a backend and then IBM, whatever quantum computer that we are using. So this is what that step, that step does. Then we need to perform this transpile operation. So what this transpile operation does is, so the simulators and quantum computers in general have a very specific hardware. And the different circuits that you write might not be easily, um, so you can't just pick up whatever circuit you draw and put it on that quantum computer directly. You need to convert the circuit in a form that is readable or that is more useful for the hardware that is implemented in the quantum computer. So um, this circuit needs to be implemented in a way that the hardware, the quantum computer hardware can understand. In, a, in our case, um, this circuit needs to be put in a way where the simulator can understand it. So that's what this transpile operation does. So you pass in our circuit and then we pass in the simulator or the quantum computer and it takes care of that. Um, now we can just run our circuit. So that's pretty easy. So let's store it in a variable result. So we run the uh, simulator. We um, run our circuit, the transpile circuit, and let's get the result. So that's that. And then I want to find how many times the measurements were made. So I will just count the frequency of objects. And finally, uh, uh, sorry, I would like to just plot it out. So I just draw a histogram. That's it. Okay. Um, Oh, so I probably should also import the histogram object as well, which I forgot. So let me do that as well. Yeah, it had taken me a while to find the utility. It's in Qiskit tools visualizations. So this bit I just copied from. Um, from the page, from the documentation page. So let me move this one here. I don't know if you're able to see that we ran our test, we um, ran the simulator and the result we got was one because our quantum state is, uh, what's the state? Yeah, so it's beta is one and alpha is zero. So whenever I, excuse me, I run the simulator, I would get this result because um, there is only there is only the state one, right? So it's not a mixture of states anymore. So it's just, so in this circuit, it's just one, and then I measure one, and that's what I get. So the way the probabilities are calculated, I think the simulator works, um, runs 500 uh, or 200 something times, something number of times and um, it just performs, uh, calculates the probability from that. You can change the number of times you want it to run from here. Um, there's a, a named value argument, but um, that's not important right now. So let's try something else. Let's change the probabilities. Now, if I change the probability to be um, alpha being one and beta being zero, now we'll see the probability for um, the zero state to be always true. So. You can see the probably the state that is detected is always zero. Okay, that that solves it. Um, what if we do something different? So let us um, put um, equal probabilities. So I put square root of one half on both ones. Why square root of one half? Because Alpha and beta have a constraint that alpha square plus beta square has to be one. 
So that's why I can't put half half because half half squared plus half squared is not one. That's why I put um, square root or half in both. So let's do that. So this is my state now. The numbers are different. And now when I run the simulator, you see I get um, the probability of getting zero is and probability of getting one are almost point, point 0.5. Of course, there'll be some discrepancy because it's a simulator and the, uh, there's simulated noise added to it as well. But um, so what's happening is that I have a quantum state where, which is a mixture, which is an even mixture of both the zero state and the one state. And um, what you see over here is that the probability when I when you measure it, it could be either of them. It could be zero or it could be one. And you see half the times it's zero and half the times it's one. So just to top it off, um, let me think of another example. We can do um, three quarters. So let's do let me put state zero to be three quarters and state one to be a quarter. So that uh, the square of this and the square of this add up to one, but the probability is uh, square root. Yeah, so the probability of this state is three quarters and this state is a quarter. So we should see um, zero state coming up as three times the first state. Let's run it and let's run the simulation. And this is exactly what we see. So 0.73 times I see zero state and point to seven times I get I see state one so this is what um, how quantum measurements are different from classical measurements because the state is a mixture of these two values and then when you measure it it breaks down to either one or the other so this was um, hello world example of sorts for Qiskit and um, next time I'll delve into a bit of theory and also try to implement the same example on an actual quantum computer. So you'll see the results will more or less be the same, but you will be running it on an actual quantum computer. So I think that's it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And um, the code for this one is available on my GitHub page. Links below. And see you guys later.